Well, hi, everybody. This is God's Hat for the Sad Truth. Uh, thanks to Dave Rubin, who uh, tagged me in a tweet by Alison Phipps, who is a professor of gender studies uh, in England. Uh, I would like to make the following announcement uh, because it turns out that both Professor Phipps and I share the same pedagogic outlook. Uh, she, in her, she, the tweet in question is uh, she shows a bunch of Lego creations uh, and she writes, so my students built Lego sculptures to represent <laughs> intersectionality and they were 100 I don't know, I guess 100%. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Uh, so it's it's very nice and it's, uh, it's so avant-garde to use uh, Lego building uh, in a university class. Uh, it sort of uh, breaks down the stereotype you know, of universities being uh, colonized by Western white man imperial science. And so the use of building Legos is, is much more inclusive. It promotes diversity. It allows us to uh, get in touch with our inner self, uh, with our childlike curiosity. And so some of you know uh, that I teach uh, courses in psychology of decision-making. So the cognitive processes uh, that people use uh, when uh, processing information, when searching for information, uh, so it's behavioral decision theory, basically. Uh, and I also teach uh, a course in uh, consumer behavior, consumer psychology, and of course, my evolutionary consumption work where I apply evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology to study our consumatory nature. Usually in my courses, uh, irrespective of whether I teach them at the uh, undergraduate uh, MBA, MSc, or PhD levels, uh, there's always a project where students have to identify a research question, uh, posit some hypotheses, collect the data, develop the proper data collection procedures, collect the data, analyze the data, and arrive at some conclusions. Uh, but I've decided that this is too uh, uh, imperialistic, uh, colonial science, and I've decided instead to also this year implement uh, a building of Legos uh, to better understand uh, psychology of decision making, consumer psychology, evolutionary psychology. And so for the first time ever, you guys will actually see my student projects this year. Uh, I'm very, very excited to report these. And I hope that Professor Phipps will, uh, you know, will, will appreciate the fact that across the pond, there's a professor also using Lego building uh, as part of understanding the biological and evolutionary roots of human nature. So this is one project that uh, uh, one of the students presented. You can see it here. It's a very nice, um, maybe this represents the uh, hormonal influences uh, inherent to the menstrual cycle when uh, women are shopping. So this, but this was done through this really cool Lego. Here's another one. This project, this project received a a lesser grade because I think that this, uh, in a sense, represents toxic masculinity. So I had to give them a lower grade for this because I personally felt unsafe and and a bit triggered by the violent imagery. But it's still a good attempt. It has a lot of colors, uh, so I was very happy with this project. This one received a failing grade because if you notice, male, also male, looks like an oil rig. So maybe this was in reference to uh, sex specific uh, strategies used as sexual signals. And we know that men are more likely to uh, use uh, risk taking as a form of sexual signal. I mean, only if you believe in this antiquated idea of male-female. Uh, but anyway, so this Lego project in my evolutionary consumption course received a failing grade because it promotes toxic masculinity. A few more other projects. This one received an A grade because it's, well, it doesn't have any men in it. So anything that doesn't have men is something that is good. 
So this received a top grade in my project, in my course uh, in understanding psychology of decision making. And finally, this one was a, also a pretty good project, but since I couldn't tell whether the depiction of the dog was that of a male or female dog, uh, I'm not sure what to give as a grade, so I'm still debating. Is it good that you can't tell the biological sex of the dog, in which case uh, that promotes a more inclusive view that is not based on uh, uh, fixed binaries and biological essentialism? So I'm thinking of giving this a B plus grade. So this is it. As you can see, I too have joined the intersectionalist uh, feminist pedagogic approach. And I'm from now on using Legos. The next challenge for me is to decide how to use uh, Legos in explaining how to apply uh, inferential statistics when analyzing data. So I'm working on this. Uh, this will probably keep me busy for the rest of the day. Slowly we inch into the abyss of infinite darkness, infinite lunacy, and infinite stupidity. Talk to you later. Cheers.